Hey, hey. There we go. All right. We are in Mark chapter 11. All right, so Mark chapter 11, starting in verse 1. Now, when they drew near Jerusalem to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples. And he said to them, go to the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered it, you'll find a cult tied on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, what are, why are you doing this? They said, the Lord has need of it. And immediately he will send it here. So they went their way and they found a cult tied by the door outside on the street and they loosed it. But someone who stood there said, hey, what are you doing loosing that cult? And they spoke to them just as Jesus has commanded. So they let them go. They Then they brought the cult to Jesus, threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus went into the temple, or into Jerusalem and into the temple, so when he had looked around at all the things, as the hour was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Mm -hmm. So, there we go. It's the triumphant entry, or triumphal entry. <sighs> well, there's a lot here, because we have the fulfillment of prophecy, of, of the Messiah and King coming, riding on a donkey. We've got the quoting of the Psalms there in verses 9 and 10. It's Psalm 118. Psalm 118 is kind of a cool psalm. You know, you've got the shortest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 117. And then you've got the longest chapter in the Bible, Psalm 119. And then right there in the middle, you've got Psalm 118, which I think it does depend a little bit on, you know, which Bible you have and how you're counting. But Psalm 118, verse 8, is like the middle of the Bible. I think King James Bible, <coughs> counting verses and whatnot, Psalm 118 is the very middle of the Bible. It is better to put your trust in the Lord than your confidence in man. But in Psalm 118, verse 25, it reads, Save now, I pray, O Lord. O Lord, I pray, send now prosperity. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the house, from the house, or blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. Now, save now, we see Hoshi Anna, Hosanna is a transliteration into the Greek, into the English. So it's kind of that like, you know, we get the translation as it's moved its way through a few languages. But that's what Hosanna means. Save now. You know, we've got a lot of words in the English language, um, Christian words to be specific. And, but they're not English words. Amen. That's like a universal word. It seems like all languages just adopt amen or amen, depending on how you want to say it. And it's a Hebrew word, but in the Greek, in the English, it's all the same. And, and it's a way of saying that you agree with something, that you're in agreement. Amen. I agree. Then we've got words like alleluia or hallelujah. You ever notice it's done both ways? Alleluia with an A, hallelujah with an H. And it's interesting because if you go through our Bibles, likely you will find hallelujah with an H 
in the Old Testament and Alleluia without the H in the New Testament. And once again, that's the Hebrew to the Greek, but really the Greek is just a transliteration. It's not a translation, you know, where two words in different languages, they have absolutely different sounds, but they mean the same thing. Shu and zapato, they don't sound at all the same, right? That's a translation. But other words like chips and chips, that's that's a transliteration where you just take a word and you move it over to the other language, you know, and there might be those languages have their sounds, so it changes in sound. But Alleluia is only found in the book of Revelation in the New Testament. But Hallel, and these are the Hallel Psalms we're looking at right there. Psalm 118, Yah, it means praise the Lord. Or lift up is to praise, to magnify, lift high, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Backtracking now, long trip. We're making our way back home. Hosanna is saved now. So whenever we sing a worship song where we sing Hosanna, that's what we're saying. And we say Hosanna in the highest. Well, the, the idea is, is like, come save from heaven. We're asking God to come down from heaven and save us and save us now. This is what people are praising and singing as they saw their Messiah coming. They were recognizing him. This is why I believe in Luke, we find that they're saying, you know, Lord, you know, aren't you going to stop these people? Why? Because the Pharisees, they knew. They knew exactly what the people were doing because they were crying out to the Messiah, right? And so here we have them crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, save now, save now. And these people, they were under the oppression of Rome, right? Uh, they were in a weird season for the Jewish people uh, on the whole. I mean, you had you know, the, these Jewish leaders in two different big camps. You had Sadducees over here who were kind of compromising religion. You got Pharisees over here who are just legalizing it. And you've got these other people who are just the average Joe trying to figure out how to worship their own God. And so the coming of the Messiah was a big deal. Save us now and save us from all this stuff. We have another phrase that it's maybe not as common in all circles, but Maranatha. You know, there's Maranatha Music was really like the first Christian recording label. Uh, Mike McIntosh and Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa, starting that down in San Diego and all the Maranatha singers and all those guys. Maranatha means come now, come quickly. He's saying, come Lord Jesus, come. And this is what they were saying on that day. Save us and save us now. And you know, the coming of Jesus is referred to as our blessed hope. That we should be looking for his coming and to save us from the wrath that is to come. And that's the idea. It's just that, that excited attitude of the coming of Jesus. And Obviously, there's a, a, a lot that could be said about the triumphal entry, about the, the day that he came on, and all these other details. Mark's gospel is, is a bit of a condensed account. It gives us a few less details than some of the others. But, but picking one thing is that word Hosanna, save now. And that, I think, should still be the prayer of the church. Maranatha, Hosanna, that come Lord Jesus now. And come and save us. And I think there's a, a place we all should desire to be where the existence of sin in the world, the wickedness that's in the world, and the knowledge of the great things that are to come, when we can honestly say that our desire truly is for him to come and come right now, that I know there's unfinished business and I want to see my kids grow up and I want this and I want that. And, you know, but at the end of the day, that our hearts are still, but I know I want to see my kids grow up. And I, and I know I want to 
finish these projects I've been working on. And maybe there's some things on my bucket list I still haven't done. But recognizing that at the end of the day, Jesus coming and putting an end to the sin and pain of this world, that's more important. And so it's our hope, our blessed hope, is his coming, his appearing, that we're waiting for him to get us on out of here and bring this whole show to an end. So Hosanna, save now. Come down, Lord, and save us from all this stuff. But until then, we're going to stay busy until he comes, right? I think that's the last thing. It's just we're going to stay busy till he comes. Well, if you don't come today, Lord, then we're going to do whatever we can to make as much headway as we can until you come for us. So save us now, Lord. We need you. Awesome. Hey, you guys have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry, the last couple of days I've just been so busy and then I look at the time and I look at what I need to get done and it's just like, it just wasn't happening for a couple of days in a row there. So we're back, Mark 11. We'll be back again tomorrow morning to look at the fig tree withered. Mm, should be good. All right, see you at 7.30, or not 7.30, 8 a.m. summer schedule tomorrow morning. Adios.